In this video, we're going to introduce dummy activities, and we're also going to look at example one, which requires you to use a dummy activity. Now, it says there that sometimes when we are drawing a network diagram, we get into situations where we need to use what is known as a dummy activity. Now, dummy activities are not real activities. They could be regarded as imaginary. And they also have a weight of zero. So I'll just show you what one looks like. If I've got two vertices, like so, if they were connected by a dummy activity, it would be a dotted line for an edge like so. And I, as I said, it's got a weight of zero. This allows us to travel from one vertex to the next instantaneously since it's got a weight of zero, meaning zero hours or days or zero minutes. There are two situations in which you might want to use a dummy activity. The first situation involves two activities that share the same immediate predecessor or immediate predecessors, but also have an immediate predecessor or predecessors that are not shared. We'll be talking more about this in example one, which we're going to complete in this video. The second situation is when two edges start and end at the same vertex. And we'll be talking about that in example two. So we'll start with example one. It says convert the following precedence table into a network diagram. We can see we've got two activities, activities A and B, which don't have any immediate predecessors. So we'll put down our start vertex. We'll label it as our start. And we'll have both activities A and B coming out from this vertex. So that's A and B completed. Now moving on to activity C, it needs to come after activity A. So to finish activity A, we put down a vertex and then activity C comes out from that point. So that's activity C completed now. Next, activity D comes after activity B. So we complete activity B with a vertex and then activity D comes out from there and we tick off activity D. When we get to activity E, this is where we start seeing some problems here. Activity E needs to follow on from both activities A and D. Now to make activity E follow activity D is not a problem at all. That's quite simple, it would be like so. But it needs to follow on from activity A as well. And activity A finishes all the way up here. Some people might say, well, what if we took activity D, joined it to the end of A, and then had activity E come out from there? What would happen? Well, let's have a look at that. So let's say we had activity D join up to the end of A and then had activity E come out from that point. Now, that's going to help us with activity E because now activity E has the predecessors A and D, which is what we wanted here. However, it doesn't help us with activity C. We've changed the predecessors for activity C now. Its immediate predecessors are now A and D. And when we look at our presence table, activity C should only have one immediate predecessor, A. So how do we get around this? Well, we'll go back to where we were before. We had activity D here, and we'll have activity E come out from the end of activity D. Remembering that activity E needs A as one of its immediate predecessors. So we'll use a dummy to fix that. We'll have a dotted line coming down like so with an arrow. And because a dummy activity has a weight of zero, we get the same result as if activity E had come directly after activity A. So we can now tick off activity E. And we might as well finish this off. Activity F comes after activities C and E. So I'm going to 
force activity C to join at the end of activity E so that activity F can come directly after activities C and E. Once again, I prefer to have straight lines. I can fix it up now. I'll rub out activity C and redraw it with a nice straight line, like so. Now let's go back to that dot point that we mentioned here. We said if you look at example one, you will see that you will need a dummy if two activities share the same immediate predecessor or predecessors, but also have an immediate predecessor or predecessors that are not shared. You will see this when we look at activities C and activity E. So when we look at both of these, they have an immediate predecessor that is shared. They both have the immediate predecessor of A, as we mentioned, that they share the same immediate predecessor. They also have an immediate predecessor that is not shared. Activity E has the immediate predecessor of D, but activity C does not. Whenever we get this situation here, we know that we're going to need a dummy activity at some point. All right, so I'm going to do a little activity with you, but first of all, let's finish our network diagram here with a finish vertex. And here I have four precedence tables, two of which will require a dummy activity. So I'd like you to pause and try and figure out which two of these precedence tables will require a dummy activity. And then press play and I'll give you the solutions and I'll explain why. All right, the solutions are the table here on the top right and the table here at the bottom left. Why is that? Well, for the one at top right, if we look at activities C and E, you'll notice that they both share an immediate predecessor. They share the immediate predecessor B, and there's also an immediate predecessor that they don't share. They do not share the immediate predecessor D. Now let's look at the bottom left. So we're looking for immediate pre predecessors that are shared and immediate predecessors that are not shared. So at the bottom left, if we look at activities D and F, they both share the immediate predecessor of activity B. The immediate predecessor or predecessors, in this instance, that they do not share are activities C and E. They don't share these. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing dummy activities. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.